This is Ken Rockwell with KenRockwell.com and KenRockwell.tv. Let's today take a look at the Nikon 200mm F2 VR Model 2. This lens came out in 2010, is still today's current model, and it has sold for $5,700 ever since the day it was introduced. When you get it, you can see my unboxing video, which shows all the other stuff, including a fantastic case that it comes in. Uh, it's a multi-function, multi strap case. It's very well built. It's super easy to use. It's big padded nylon. It's actually a useful case, unlike the really nice trunk cases they used to include, which looked real impressive, the roadie cases, but nobody ever actually used those. This is what you get when you pull out of the case. You get this crazy cap. Uh, this is one of my standard caps in my collection. You can get a newer cap when you buy the lens. This is the cap, this giant hooded thing, which is padded nylon, which is nice because it's padded. If you bang it into something, it's not a problem. Here is the lens with the hood. This hood attaches with a thumb screw like that. You probably always want to use it with your hood, which we pop on like so. And to be honest, you'll probably never put it away with the hood collapsed like I showed you, because you can put the cap on over the nose of this beast like that. You can snug it up if you like, and you're good to go. And then when you want to shoot, all you do is simply pull this off, and there you go, boom. And let's take a look at the lens. We'll take off its cap so we can see every intimate detail of this beast. Here we go. Here is the Nikon 200mm F2 VR Model 2. The first thing we should do is let's take a look at some of the pictures this makes. The whole point of this lens, over a 70 to 200 2.8, is that it is a stop faster. It sucks in twice as much light at 200 millimeters, which is critical. If you're a professional earning your living with this thing, you have to shoot better, faster, and cleaner than any other guy out there because today everybody's a photographer. With this lens, you can shoot at half the ISO in dim light or shoot at twice the shutter speed in dim light or your choice of any combination thereof. And the main application of this lens, as opposed to 302.8, is that you can shoot concerts and indoor small court sports. Like you can shoot volleyball, you can shoot gymnastics, boxing, and things where you can get much closer to the players, as well as shoot concerts where you can get closer than you would need to 300. And by having an f2, as opposed to an f2.8 lens, as you can see here in this demonstration shot, first. Here's the entire shot. It's a vertical shot of a guitarist playing at night. But then if we zoom in here, you'll notice we can see every little whisker. We can tell when he shaved last. You can tell it's a good band. They're actually using real Shure microphones, not uh, the rubbish from, <laughs> from heaven knows where else with no-name brands. You can see every detail you don't need to see in his shirt. And down to his fingers and his fretwork, the detail is just incredible which again, if we had to shoot at a stop slower speed, if we only had brought an f2.8 lens, we'd lose it in motion because these guys are moving. Or if we had to shoot at ISO 3600 twice as much, it would just get softer and grainier. That's what noise reduction does. Let's look a little more. Again, these are about $5,700. I got mine here from B&H in New York City, where again, I've been buying most of my stuff or I don't know most, a great deal of my stuff from them ever since the 1970s when I was a little kid and when they opened up. It's an optically superb lens. As you've seen, it's super sharp and contrasty, wide open, which is much better than the manual focused lenses that came before it. 200 millimeter F2 lenses, again, they're for speed. If we take a look at some more things around here. This porker, <laughs> when you put this on your camera and you walk into a venue, they know you're the pro, they're not some amateur with a 70 to 200. And knowing that you're the pro, they're going to pull you right up to the VIV lounge or the front line or wherever you need to go, probably without you having to flash any other qualifications, which again is all dependent on your ability to work people. What's new about this lens since the previous model that came out from 2004 to 2010 is not much. This claims to have four stops versus three stops of vibration reduction. It adds nano crystal coat, which admittedly you never needed. And, and it has an additional manual autofocus mode. You'll notice there are three modes here, which I covered in my how to use an autofocus performance video. Essentially, this new mode, M slash A, makes it a little less sensitive to motion of this. So when you're hand holding it and it's moving the manual focus ring by accident, that it will be less likely to go off on a tangent there. Other than that, it's exactly the same as the 2004 lens. It's also got incredibly fast autofocus in addition to its super sharpness, and I show that in a separate video. It's always got manual focus override, which again, it's a real mechanical ring. It's not electronic, it's instantly coupled, there's no delay, there's no mysteries. Admittedly, on Sony's and Fuji's cameras, good luck if you can get manual focus override all the time, because it usually doesn't work depending on what mode you're in. 
It's got four control buttons along the front of the lens here, which are super convenient, which again, as I showed in my usage video, you can make it either do autofocus lock, autofocus on, or memory recall, which means if you hold this button to set a preset distance, it'll immediately go back to it. But I've already shown that. It's got image stabilization, which works great. It stops down to F22. Very importantly, it is made domestically in Japan for the absolute highest quality you can get. It's not offshore to China or God knows where, just to save some money for Nikon and not get you any higher quality. The only thing bad about it is, besides the fact that it's $5,700 and it weighs a ton and it's huge, <laughs> is that it's not that sharp when you use it on a teleconverter. It focuses super fast on a converter, but it's not really that sharp on a two times converter. The only thing that's missing, are it has no clicks. Here's our tripod collar. Tripod color doesn't come off, and there are no clicks at 90 degrees, which I wish it had, because if you're shooting on a tripod, you can go straight from horizontal to vertical and not have to worry. You can just, by feel, go from one to the other. Other than that, you know, it's a $5,700 lens. It's not missing anything. It actually works on everything, every, even from film days. It works on every Nikon digital camera, either DX or full frame. But the only problem is if you're going to try to shoot it on film cameras. If you want to shoot it on an F6, or any of the nice cameras like the F6, the F100, the F5, the N7, the N75, everything's completely compatible. If you want to step down to an N55, which makes no sense, uh, you won't get autofocus. If you have an F4, you know, it even works on the F4. Autofocus is great on the F4. The problem is you won't have VR and you won't have the shutter priority and aperture priority modes. But again, go to my review on my website and I cover everything in explicit detail there. If we want to take a look at the bottom of the lens, you can see some more of its little qualifications and specifications on there. AFS stands for Silent Wave Autofocus Motor. Nikkor, that has been Nikon's brand name ever, ever since before they even made cameras back in the 1930s. Actually, the first Canon camera, which was a copy of the Leica in the 1930s, used a Nikon Nikkor lens before Nikon even made cameras. G stands for gelding, which means they remove the aperture ring, so it's no longer compatible with the older cameras. ED is extra low dispersion glass. VR is vibration reduction, but we know all that. We can look at the optics. Its optics are <laughs> super ED glass elements, some ED glass elements. It's got 13 elements in nine groups, three super, e uh, excuse me, three ED, one super ED. It focuses internally like all these lenses have for quite a while. It has a nine blade rounded diaphragm, which means it's pretty much a circle most of the time and I don't get much in the way of sun stars. It's got a 12 and a half degree angle of view. Close focus is six feet or 1.9 meters. And I'll show you how close it gets in macro. Here we see a macro shot made at the closest focus distance, wide open at F2, where this lens would naturally be its softest. I'm zooming in here on the computer, but as you can see, it stays super sharp. There, of course, is no depth of field at F2. It works marvelously well. Not that it gets that close, but it is super sharp. Overall, it's an incredibly sharp lens, as it should be for $5,700, and autofocus is essentially instantaneous. One of the things it doesn't do perfectly well is focus breathing. As you focus near and far, near and far, the image will tend to grow and contract a little bit, which can annoy the heck out of you if you're trying to use this for making a motion picture. So this is not a cinema lens. The bokeh is beautiful, as it should be for 200 millimeter f2 lens. There's, as you can see, the background totally evaporates. There's no background left. Distortion, there's no visible distortion at any time unless you're shooting at only six feet away and if you went to, <laughs> went to the trouble of turning off the distortion correction in your camera. Otherwise, even without correction on film, it's got no problems with distortion that's visible, although you can measure it. Fall off is invisible. If you leave your camera at its default of automatic vignette correction normal, if you turn it off, you'll see just a tiny bit at F2, but why in the world would you do that if you're looking for that? For filters, there's no way to attach a front filter. You use the rear holder and attach conventional 52 millimeter filters in this little holder. For flare, there's very little in the way of flare. You'd really have to go blind trying to find that. There aren't any lateral color fringes. Mechanically, it's built tough. The hood is plastic with rubber front and rear bumpers. There's a bumper on the front of the lens here for when you're laying it down so it won't scratch your front, <laughs> scratch your table. It's got solid gold uh, for its band, which signifies uh, the extra low dispersion glass is this gold, although that came out in the 1970s. Nikon's got a little bit looser with that. Tripod collar is all metal. The focus ring is all metal covered with rubber. The barrel in the middle here is metal. These are plastic. This ring here that sets the VR on and off is metal. This little push button is plastic. That's the only thing plastic on this lens. The filter holder, filter nub in here, the mount 
it's all metal, which is what you get when you pay <laughs> top dollar. Uh, the buttons are rubber covered. These are all one piece of rubber here, and this little dude here is also covered in rubber. Spherochromatism, which is where backgrounds and foregrounds that are not in focus may take on some color casts on edges, is actually extraordinarily good because it's almost none. And I'm very happy to see that with this lens. Most lenses this fast and this long have lots of spherochromatism, which is the main thing that's limited their development over the decades. The great thing is there's almost none in this lens. Image stabilization, I get four real stops of stabilization. I can shoot it, I get uh, more than 80% of the time at a 1 250th of a second, I get perfect tripod equivalent sharpness with no vibration reduction. At a 15th of a second with vibration reduction on, 90% of the time I get complete, 100% indistinguishable from a tripod, perfect sharpness on my 45 megapixel D850. Sun stars, there's not much in the way of sun stars, even at f22, this is about the best that I can get. With teleconverters, as I said at the beginning, it works great. It focuses super fast and the viewfinder image is super bright, but ultimately the sharpness isn't really what you'd expect. Just use, use a different lens. If you can afford this, you can use your 80 to 400 for when you need a 400 millimeter lens. Also, the teleconverters today are not designed for F2 lenses, so you're really only getting about F5 out of the combination, not F4. Compared to the 70 to 200 millimeter F2.8, as I covered at the very beginning, it's all about that one extra stop, which is basically twice the sensitivity to light to separate you from the amateur competitors who all have a lens like this. If you have to ask, yes, get the 300 millimeter f2.8. Not only does it cost a little less, it's actually more useful overall. And if you're an astronomer, a little sharper off in the corners. If you can find a used 200 millimeter f2 VR from 2004 to 2010, it's the same lens, buy it. I don't know that the VR system is that much different, which is the only visible difference between them. Compared to the old manual focus lens made from 1977 to 2005, the optics are completely different. They are completely superior in the autofocus lenses. The original manual focus lens was never that sharp. The manual focus lens was back from the days of film when we were trying to photograph concerts and photograph indoor sports in the dark with no more than ASA 800 film, Tri-X, or maybe color negative film at ASA 400, and it was tough. We needed every stop we could get. To learn how to use this lens, I have another video for that. If you have to ask if you need this lens, then the answer is no, you do not need this lens. You should get a 300 2.8 long before you get this. Other than that, thank you very much for watching Ken Rockwell and Ken Rockwell TV, and we'll catch you next time.